Thank you, Reggie. By Joe, that was lovely. Who's Reggie? Pardon? Who's Reggie? Who's Reggie, you silly ass? Reggie Dixon. <laughs> Good Lord, yes, by Joe. You're too young to remember him when he was on that Wurlitzer organ. Oh, oh I do like to be beside the seaside. We loved him then, you know. I'm sure you did. Yes. Mind you, he's getting the hang of this magic business, I must say. He's doing rather well, is he? Yes, he seems to be, yes, coping very well. Yeah, he's rather nice, you know, isn't he? Because you know he wants on this show, don't you? No. Morris Dandruff. <laughs> he's damn clever. Woodruff. <coughs> Pardon? Woodruff. <laughs> Is he? <it>? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why he's changed his name. <laughs> He's not in any bother, is he? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. He's damn clever, you know. He's astronomical. <laughs> yes, I know. Looks into the future. I know, yes. Yeah, he does it in sealed envelopes, you know. <laughs> yes. It isn't easy. <laughs> no, I don't suppose it is. Because, <laughs> actually, Aunt Veronica does that, you know. Does she really? Oh, right, because she doesn't do it in sealed envelopes. No, 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 no. She, she does it in a tent with a turban on. <laughs> I think a little bit of it must have rubbed off on me. I can tell what people are by just looking at them. You know. Really? Oh, good. Lord. Now you're you're Sagittarius. You see, it's a gift, you see, ladies and gentlemen. No, you're wrong. It's not. Pardon? I'm not Sagittarius. Pardon? No, no. I, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Positive, yes. That's very odd. Now, you're not a bit like Aunt Veronica. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? She's a third girl. Oh, is she? Well, that's what she tells us, yes. <laughs> Actually, I've got my doubts. I think she's Scorpio. Really? Because it's scorpions that have that gift, you see. So premonitions, things like that. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, yes. She's damn good at that. Damn good at it. I recall one evening, she was awake all night. She was convinced something terrible was going to happen to the vicar. <laughs> if she was that worried, why didn't she give him a ring? Didn't need to. He got his left leg caught in the bell rope and rang himself. <laughs> See the funny side of it, you know. He never liked having his leg pulled out. <laughs> well, dear, because we thought that she was going to marry him, you see, at the time. Your Aunt Veronica married the vicar? No, no, you silly. I'll pay attention. <laughs> Julian Honeybone. <laughs> Julian Honeybone? Yes, yes. He was a water designer. Oh, I see. Used to do rather peculiar things with a twig. <laughs> And then on the eve of the wedding, she broke off his impending nuptials. <laughs> <laughs> and he was rather upset about it. He just packed his twig and went off to the Sahara. Because <laughs> I mean, the chap wouldn't do that to another chap, would he? Well, I no, I, I suppose not, no. <laughs> oh, damn it, no. I say, Alan, I've been thinking. Yes? Why can't a woman be like a man? Pardon? Yes. Why can't a woman be more like a man? Men are so honest, so thoroughly square, eternally noble, historically fair, who when you win will always give your back a pat. Now, why can't a woman be like that? I don't know. Oh, one man in a million, they shout at this. Now and then there's one with slight defects. One perhaps whose truthfulness you doubt a bit. But by and large, we are a marvelous sex. Now why can't a woman behave like a man? I mean, men are so jolly, good natured and kind. A better companion you never will find. If I were hours late for dinner, would you bellow? Of course not. If I forgot your silly birthday, would you thus nonsense? 
Would you sulk his eyes out and others alone? No. Well, why can't a woman 